Good morning, church, locally here in Springville, and those of you who tune in to us uh, across this nation abroad, um, welcome. This is Pentecost Sunday. This Sunday uh, is 40 days from Passover. It was seven weeks after the Passover, and it was known as the, the Feast of Weeks, a celebration for the people of Israel. At the event marked the reaping of that first harvest. They would take that first crop, and then they would break, bake that wheat bread, and then they would offer it as a wave offering to God. It was known for being a, a time also that the law was given to Moses, uh, the Torah, remembering the, the time that the Israelites had left Egypt, and then seven weeks later they would receive the law on Mount Sinai. See, the, Israel, the Israelites looked at the, the giving of the law as a supernatural event. And it's interesting to me for the, the new church in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, Pentecost was another supernatural event. For some of us, and for them at the time, those traditions caused them to look back towards the law, the Torah, a remembering, and uh, reminds me of kind of how we operate today, that we look at things as that we're going through at the, this present time. This isn't the way we've done things in the past, or this isn't how I've always done it, or I don't want to follow this new tradition. It doesn't feel right. See, God is a God of the new, new mercies, new new miracles, new harvests, and even he gives us new life. Many see what's happening today as somehow it's robbed us. It's robbing our kids. It's robbing our families, and something is missing. We, we won't be able to celebrate the way we used to, and we aren't able to gather like we used to. We missed maybe a graduation or a birthday or even a parade, but we've probably said to ourselves, I don't like where we're headed, and the fact is, is Maybe some of those things aren't coming back. But it's interesting to me that the Lord chose the same day that was marked by the celebration of the law would mark the, the entering of the Holy Spirit, the tour guide. See, the word was truth. But now the one who would lead us into all truth had come. Jesus talked about this in John chapter 16, 13. He said, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will only speak what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. In fact, in verse 12, the verse prior to this, Jesus says, I have much more to tell you, but you couldn't bear it all. But for some of us, the events have caused us to become upset with change. I don't like the new new. I like the way we did things in the past. That we feel like that we've been pulled away from the things that are important to us. Perhaps we of the church have become dependent and adopted the ways of the world. The Lord is trying to break us out of that mold. Remember, he says in Isaiah 43, 19, Behold, he says, See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. See, Pentecost was a time, a, spring, a springtime celebration. Something new was springing forward. The prophet Isaiah is saying that to, de to us to even today. He's like, do you perceive it? See, Isaiah says in the verse before that, he says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I believe this Pentecost is marking something new for us all. Pastor Ron said it several weeks ago, I don't want to go back to normal, that we would want to welcome the new. See, for the new church in the book of Acts, something was about to break out on them, over them, and even through them. But if they stayed stuck where they had been, God would not be able to use them as vessels as he desired. This event, Pentecost, marked the giving of the law, now would mark something totally new. It had marked the beginning of a new season. Now that new season was beginning. That new season is beginning in us. See, the truth had been revealed by His Word. The Word had become flesh, and now the Spirit would come and lead and guide into all truth. See, He is that tour guide. They would now begin to experience what Jesus forecasted to them years in advance. Pentecost, for some, was a place where they had gotten stuck in the law, in the old ways, in traditions. But Pentecost really should be a place of where we're going. It should mark something new.
That's what God wants to unfold before us. This is how it's always been done. This is how I'm used to it. See, if we say those things, what we're really saying is, I want to go back. But can we let go of the past? The way things were done, our past failures and our shortcomings, breaking those traditions, maybe even the hurts that we've carried around with us, so we can move forward to where God wants us to go. Can we welcome change instead of resisting it? I said it last week, come, Lord Jesus, come. This is where we be camp in the new beginnings, in this new season that God is bringing us into. Some will stay stuck. And we'll coax them, we'll encourage them, we'll implore them, but we're not going to remain there with them. Just because they're stuck doesn't mean we're going to stay there with them. See, we move out, we move forward. The gospel of Pentecost is a forward-charging power. We remember the one thing as we look back. Jesus' resurrection and ascension is our hope. See, but the rest we forget, forgetting who I was, not glamorizing who I was in the past. See, I don't even know who that man is anymore. A new man has been birthed. Some want to camp on the old. I want what's next over that next hill or that other side of that mountain. Paul said it like this in Philippians 3, 12 through 14. He said, not that I have already attained this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ took hold of for me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. See, let this Pentecost mark that same attitude for us. Ever reaching, ever straining forward, taking hold of what Jesus has already attained for us. See, that can even sound like a contradiction. Reaching, straining, and taking hold of what he's already done. You've heard me say this in the past. The Christian life is held in tension at many times. Even this, the pressing forward and the forgetting what's behind may sound like it's in opposition to the message of, that I've preached to you in the past about reflection and introspection, but it's not. See, we have to have that same examination that Paul talked about. But God balances these things in tension. That's what I'm talking about. God loves us right here where we're at. He forgives me for my failures and shortcomings, yet He spurs me to holiness and righteous living. See, one part sees the failures and know that God forgives. The other part strains and, stre and presses towards holiness and righteousness that has already been appropriated for me. And it's done, yet it's being done. I know that even sounds like it's intention. Every healthy church and follower of Christ lives in this tension. So much of our Christian faith, so much of our walk with Christ revol involves this truth being held in tension. Again and again we encounter these kinds of truths. Two truths that seem to not match. They don't seem to be comfortable with one another. In fact, there's an example of it in Mark chapter 8 verse 35 where Jesus said, whoever wants to Whoever wants to save his life must lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. There's tension there. See, the harder we work to preserve ourselves and build ourselves up and become great in accordance with what the world has brings our soul into danger. The more we abandon the world's definition of success and, and, and take up our cross and follow Jesus, the more our eternity is secure. This contrast is held in tension. That's what I'm talking about. As I attempt to hold on to the things of this world, I'm losing my grip on the life to come. And as I relinquish this world, the things of this world, as I grow closer and more attuned to the, the coming life in Christ, it's crazy. All these things held in tension sometimes feel contradictory, but the resolution is found in one place, the cross of Christ. That is the place where hope and suffering and sin and righteousness are all intermingled. We all find this ultimate expression in one terrible and wonderful moment that is at the cross of Christ where we find and receive our new identity. And all this is held together by the cross of Christ. It's that death, burial, resurrection, and ascension all coupled together, held together in tension by God's grace. 
It doesn't make sense to the human mind. But as the Holy Spirit, as Pentecost comes and renews our mind, it comes alive. My job as your pastor is to keep your visual horizon upward and eternal. Everything we experience during the week will try to coax us back into the world with its fascinations and all of its its wonder around us. But this Pentecost, let it be an awakening to new life, new mercies, new encounters with Christ through the Spirit of God. Let it also allow us to let go of the world, to let go of traditions and experiences that I find so important that are tied to this world. This morning, as I close, I want us all to be looking heavenward. That's where I want to keep your focus. Those of you who are local here in Springville, we're going to be together next week. I will give you the the time and and the new location this week. You'll find that out. But the rest of you, I bring this message to you every week, and I want to let you know that you're a part of us. I want you to know how much I love you. And as I, I talk to you all across this country, I feel like you're a part of us. And and so as I close this morning, let's all move forward in this Pentecost and let the Holy Spirit bring life to us in this new season, letting go of this world and looking forward to heaven. Amen.